Hey, Jody here. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of TIG welding aluminum, just running beads on quarter inch thick plate. That's about six millimeters for everybody else other than the U.S. And uh, I'm going to run some beads on that and try to dial in the sweet spot setting. So I'm going to settle on a good AC frequency and a good setting for AC balance, that sort of thing. Also, I'm going to take this same machine, hook up a stinger, switch it over to stick mode, and burn a 1 8 7018 on a T-joint. <laughs> Let's do it. This will be the last video I do with this particular welder. This is the welder in the giveaway, and I have picked a winner. The winner is Chris from Fort Myers, Florida. Chris is a deserving winner. He's practicing hard during his lunch break every day at work, trying to get more certifications and up his game. I hope this welder helps. I'm going to be cutting up some quarter inch thick aluminum here, and I'm going to be using this Irish spring bar of soap to keep my blade cool, lube it a little bit. I like using soap for lubrication on aluminum and other and a lot of other metals actually for drilling holes and things like that because it washes off really easily. It's water soluble. So I'm also using this aluminum cleaner here from Dynaflux. Uh, I've used this for quite a while now and it works a lot better with the spray attacher on it there. And I scotch brighted it pretty good, rinsed it off, and then a little acetone and a wipe down and you can see it's pretty clean metal now. And these are for some future videos. Uh, some TIG welding stuff, checking out different settings on AC and whatnot. Got my Duresta ice pick in the mail. And it's pretty cool. I wanted one since I saw these things, so I just decided to grab one. And I'm going to use it today to scribe some lines on the aluminum, just to run a set of beads on here, just to kind of have something to go by. Plus, I like Jimmy. I want to support him. All right, I'm going to be using 4043 today. This is a rod rack I built a while back. It's got the little PVC clips on there. 332 diameter. That's 2.4 millimeters. And I'm going to be using a sharpened electrode, and it's going to ball up differently according to what settings I use. So I'm going to max out the machine and just use the foot pedal. AC, TIG, 2T setting. Make sure the pulse is off. And from there, the next thing is really AC frequency and AC balance. And I'm going to set the AC frequency fairly low to about 70 to start with. And I'm going to come over here somewhere around 35% on the AC balance. That's 35% cleaning. That's 35% EP, the electrode positive part of the AC cycle. Uh, it's what gives you your cleaning. And so uh, a lot of machines, the reason I mention that is some machines list it kind of backwards from that. So a setting of 70 would essentially be a setting of 30 on this machine. You notice the, the white frosty area. You can, you can really see it to the left of the bead there. That's called cathodic etching. Uh, it's, it's where the cleaning action breaks up the aluminum oxide film, and it leaves a little bit of a frosted look there. Typically it doesn't hurt a thing to have a wide band of, of cleaning of the frosty looking area there, but some manufacturers don't want any more than they, can, than they have to have. And the more cleaning you have, the hotter your electrode gets, and sometimes you have to step up the size of your electrode. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit. All right, for the next bead, I'll bump it down 5 to 10 there. And we'll run another one here. I already had run one. You can see it's getting the, the cleaning has gotten, gotten just a little more narrow, but there's still a lot of it. False start right there. Once the tip balls up on an electrode, if you start off with it sharp, once it balls up, the starts usually aren't quite as good. It all depends on the machine. All right. I like a good clean puddle. I, I, I prefer to have a lot of that frosty area if, if the choice is not have a good clean puddle. If, I, if I've got pepper in the puddle, little black dots, I'm going to increase the cleaning action, and I don't care if i got that swath of frosty area next to the bead. That's just my personal preference especially if I'm welding aluminum castings or something like that. Now, a little observation here. You'll notice the electrodes purple and blue don't have enough post flow. So I'm going to increase that to about 10 seconds. I'm going to pretty much max the AC balance out as little cleaning as possible there, which is at, at about 20%. Some machines will take you all the way up to 99%. Miller Dynasty, for instance, I think is 99%. I, I never weld on 99%, though. It's usually uh, 75 or lower. So even with this, even with the cleaning, as least as, as it goes, it's a lot of cleaning. 
And part of that's because I'm using a gas lens there. I'm using a number six gas lens, and you typically get more cleaning action with a better gas envelope. That cleaning action does not like to go where there's no gas. Right, here's another shot. I've made sure it's maxed out now. I'm going to talk about a few things here. You know, my my uh, when I'm teaching somebody to weld, typically I'm 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 teaching them to keep the keep the torch hand still while you add filler. So you're using one hand at a time, and you can see that's kind of what I'm doing here. All right, one last bead here. You really need a foot pedal, and this foot pedal is just okay. You can see it kind of wants to scoot across the. Uh, the, the floor there, but for a, for a, for bead control like this, when I'm just trying to go just hot enough to take the bead out to the edge, a foot pedal becomes really necessary on aluminum. It's really hard to get the arc, the heat dialed in to where you're you're not wrapping the corner uh, with a lot of heat. So I'm I'm a big fan of foot pedals, but I also like to experiment not using a foot pedal sometimes. These were the settings that, that wound up kind of being the sweet spot for quarter inch thick material, at least what I liked. I settled on about 80 hertz. I like lower frequencies for thicker metal. AC balance on, set on 25% cleaning, that's 25% EP. Post flow 10 seconds. I use a number six gas lens with 12 to 15 CFH, 332, 2% lanthanated electrode, 332, 4043 filler metal. I didn't want to send this off to Chris without having at least burned a stick rod or two in case somebody asked me how it does on stick. So that's next. Very quickly, I'm just going to switch it over to the stick icon, go to direct current, and then go over mainly just set the amperage. Now I'm going to start out somewhere around 130 to 135. There's just one or two more things you've got to do to hook up the stinger. So I'm going to take the, the ground out and hook the stinger up to electrode positive there, the plus sign, remove the TIG torch, and put the ground in there. And I needed to remove the, the remote amperage, the foot pedal plug there too. So this is about 135 amps. It's pretty darn hot. You see that puddle's kind of hanging back a little bit, but no complaints there, no complaints. Here I'm going to do a little crater fill. At the end I'm going to reverse direction to kind of try to fill the crater because it is pretty hot. Snap out. And it ran pretty good. Those are 1 8 7018. And they will run anywhere from, uh, you know, depending on what position you're welding in, 105 up to about 140. All right, let's take a look at some previous welds that I did with this and also a little bit about the, the new welding app that my son Joey built. Remember I did this part here, and I used to use the standard long cup on there, and I walked the cup. I won't camp out much on this stuff because most of you have seen it already. But this is around probably 180 amps. Nice smooth arc, and my positioner there, of course, helps a lot on getting a uniform bead. But there's a bunch of these parts to do, and after about this many, that torch was getting smoking hot. Like I said, I was up around 180, and, and that's what happens to a collet. When you get it too hot and then twist a little too hard on it, it gets really soft and it corkscrews and then it's no good. And when I say no good, it just usually won't bite onto the electrode anymore and the electrode slips in and out. Now, I like to use a stubby gas lens kit on an on a air-cooled torch like this. I rarely use the cups that come with it. Just a personal preference thing, but there is there are reasons behind it. Number one, it shrinks the torch and just feels better in my hand. You can get in tighter spaces with it, definitely. But... The main reason is just I like the way it welds. And here's an example. This is from a previous weld that I did in one of the first videos. Even with the AC balance, with the cleaning set as low as possible, I can extend the electrode out there. I keep a sharp tip. And you see I've got lots of cleaning action because I've got a really good gas shielding there. It's hard to get a, it's hard to get a good gas shield like that with the electrode out that far with a standard cup. So that's why I like them, and that's why I sell them. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the settings here. You, you settle on some nice sweet spot settings on, on a certain machine, on a certain job, and you want to remember all that stuff. And this is these are good settings, so I, I did want to remember this, and I didn't. I had to go back to watch the old YouTube video. Well, my son Joey recently uh, launched this Share My Weld app. Right now it's only for the iPhone, but that, something had to come first. 
So we're, he's working hard on getting the Android version up and running, but it just lets you input all of the uh, information, all the details, amps, cup size, gas flow rate, filler metal type, filler metal diameter, without having to type all that stuff in. And then it lets you join it to a photo. So basically you have a sort of a info pick on your phone. I just coined a new phrase. So here I want to add some extra information. I want to add the frequency, 120 hertz, balance set on 30, and it was done with an AHP 200 machine. So I lock all that in, and I go to share it, and it asks me to open up my photos so I can pick which photo. And I'll pick the photo that I was doing there. I snagged off that last video. And now that will let me remember that. And I can choose to either keep it private, where only I can see it, or I can share it with people in the app, or I can post it to Instagram if I want to. And now I've got it on my phone, in my hip, in my back pocket, or my side pocket. I've got all that information along with a photo. So it's just going to help me remember it next time a similar job comes along. So that's available now on the App Store. Again, working hard on the Android version. Congratulations to Chris from Fort Myers. And thanks, everybody, for your patience. I know this giveaway drug out a little longer than it should have. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.